Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 4.0, and today is day 32. The second day in a multi video series on zip form training. So, yesterday I introduced you to zip form, uh, kind of what the program looks like, and how to bring documents into your folder or start a folder. Today, I'm going to talk to you about one of the most powerful portions of ZipForm and one of the main reasons why I recommend you use it, and that is the ability to create templates. I know I have created videos before on creating templates in DocuSign. However, those are typically one document templates. Today, I'm going to show you how to create templates that include multiple documents. So we're coming to ZipForm Plus. We're going ahead and logging in. And again, when we log in, we come into this screen. Typically, if you're on dashboard or transactions, it doesn't really matter. We want to click on templates here at the top. So we're going to choose templates. And then we're going to click on new template. It's going to ask us, what type of template are you attempting to get started here? So let's do a listing template in this case. So I'm going to choose new listing. And it's going to start off and say, OK, what do you want the template name to be called? And so I'm just going to say um, residential listing resale template. Right. So this wouldn't be for new construction. It's not land or a lot. We're just going to do a standard good old fashioned uh, resale residential listing. So uh, that's going to be residential. I don't need it to automatically apply. I, I want to, uh, you know, I will apply it myself. We'll learn a little bit more about applying the template here in a future video. But we're going to go ahead and click on save and what that's going to do it's going to start a template now there are no documents in this template yet because i have to do that as well so the first thing that i need to do is start adding my template documents so i can find those under forms so we'll start there so all forms and again you can see it defaults to whichever library you were in last i have the texas realtors library my mls library uh, the trek library a couple of nar so You'll need to find which library works for you and your documents. Um, for example, I know the first thing that I need is the IABS in, Tim, uh, in Texas, the information about brokerage services. So let me put that in and there we go. Information about brokerage services and I want the seller landlord version. So I'm going to click on that document and you can see it brought it into the folder. Uh, the next document I want to bring in would be the actual listing agreement. Uh, so that is TXR 1101. I can actually type in the number as well and then get the document pulled up that way. I'm already in my TXR library. So if you know the number of the form and it's listed appropriately, you can bring that in pretty quickly and easily. So there's my uh, residential listing agreement. Uh, let's find a couple more forms to bring in just so I can show you how this works. So 2502 is one that I need. That's the notice of information from other sources. Uh, the, the permission to advertise, release and advertise. That's one we need here in Texas. And let's just do the wire fraud. So there's a few other documents I'm going to need for my market centers checklist, but I just brought in these five. We'll go ahead and start there. So now that I have those documents brought into the template, this is a great start right now. I could apply this template and just like the DocuSign forms groups, these documents would be immediately brought in. However, I can take it one step further and actually come in and go through and fill out all of these documents with all of the information. So I could go in and put in Keller Williams Platinum Realty and uh, I don't nine, I don't know the license number. This is probably not the best form because I don't know all of these by heart. Um, and I would still go through, right? And I'd say, okay. Uh, Ann Walker, and I do know that Randy is my supervisor, and I know my name here. So I could fill in all of the ones I know. Later on, I'll have to come back and fill in the blanks after I research some of those license uh, numbers. But the nice thing is, as I'm filling in all of this information, this will come in, this form will come into my uh, folder later on, already filled out as I'm filling it out now. So I wouldn't have to fill it out every single time in order to, right, I'm not having to do all of these blanks. And so um, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. KLRW63 at KW.com. And there we go. I'll get as much filled in as I know off uh, hand. Later on, I'll fill in the rest of those license numbers. So I'm going to click on save to save this document. 
Then I'm going to click on the back button to go into my next document. Now here's my listing agreement. So let's click on that. There are some pieces of information in here that are going to not be pre-fillable, right? I can't fill out my seller's information because I don't know who I'm working with. But I do know that no matter who I'm working with, right, it's still going to be Keller Williams. So I actually click on Keller Williams Platinum Realty. You see, as soon as you enter it once under broker, it suggests it for you to use it again. So I don't have to type it out every single time. Now an address, I can start typing in. Uh, the street address, 19708. And you'll also see that <clears throat> it has predictive kind of uh, addresses based upon, I, it's probably Google if I had to guess. Uh, but I can choose that and boom, there's my address already ready to go, put in. I am gonna come back in and put in my phone number and my email already came in, 224-7934, there we go. I can't put any information about the lot or the exclusions or the HOA term. Um, however, I could probably check this box and say 6%. Um, I don't typically do anything less than that. And if I did, I still have the ability to edit this when I pull the document in. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at 6%. Uh, my protection period is always 60 days. Um, I'm always paid in Harris County. That never changes. That's where my office is located. And so you can see, right, that you could go through and check some of these boxes that are always the same. Um, I don't take pocket listings, so I'm always going to do, we'll file this listing, and uh, it's within five days or whatever the MLS says. Again, if any of this changes for any reason, then I could go in and, and do that, but typically I'm not. Uh, our scheduling company is uh, showing time. Um, I always put a key box on my property and so I'm going to go through I always do intermediary I'm always going to pay the other side 3% regardless of whether they are or not a member of the MLS um, and these are boxes I would have to be filling out every single time um, and they're the same answer every single time on these documents so by pre-filling them in every time I bring this document into uh, my uh, folder in the future it's already going to be filled out so 9007091. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that's our number. I'll have to go back and check. But I'm always the broker associate. There's my printed name. That's already good to go. Now I can save this document as part of my template. I'll come back. <clears throat> we'll just do a couple more. And then what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like when you pull a template in. So notice of information from other sources. This is always going to be to sellers of property address listed below from, and every single time it's gonna be from Keller Williams Platinum Realty. This is always the phrase that we use for that document. It's always gonna be signed by me. So I put that information in and I didn't realize sellers of property address listed below is gonna come down here. So I guess I'll have to leave that blank and fill it in each time. That's all right. So we'll save that one. And then finally, I think we get to wire fraud, the final document. So you can see it depends on your, um, your market, right? Your uh, brokerage, your state, your city, your board, uh, how many of these documents you're bringing in and how many of them you can pre-fill out if it's always the same information. This is a wire fraud warning, but it's in a listing template so the people signing it are always gonna be sellers. So I can go ahead and pre-check those boxes as well. So finally, I've got five boxes completely filled out or five forms completely filled out. So I can now come back and this template is now saved. So if I go back to my list, you can see now I have my residential listing resale template. I worked on this earlier this morning, just to kind of give you an idea. Here are all of the documents necessary for a buyer deal. And I've gone through each of these documents and filled in any information that does not change, right? Typically it would be, you know, my email, my name, my phone number, my brokerage, all of that type of stuff. So now when I go to transactions and I'm going to start a new transaction, you can see, well, let's do new listing and let's just say it's one, two, three main street. And this is going to be a residential listing and here it is, select template. Well, cool, I can go in and choose my buyer's residential resale template. And I would choose that and then click on save. Watch what happens. As soon as it opens, when I go to the documents tab, you can see all of these documents are already brought in. 
Yesterday I was showing you how to add them manually. Now I don't have to add them. In addition, let's just look at the residential uh, buyer tenant rep. Well, all of this information is already pre-filled. I didn't have to fill it, right? I always do intermediary status, didn't have to check that. I always get paid 3% or 50% on leases. My protection period is always 60 days. I always get paid in Harris County. All of that information is brought in because I pre-filled it out when I brought, when I built the template. So literally guys, it's gonna save you so much time for all of those data points that, that are always the same way. So that's essentially how you go in and you build out these templates. And think about it guys, you could have multiple templates for your buyer side transactions, whether that's um, you know, commercial or a lot or residential land or you know, a, a farm and ranch, all the different types of transactions that you might do, new construction. Uh, you could build out templates for each one of those on both the buy and sell side. So tomorrow I'm going to dive into the actual documents. I'm going to show you how you can open those documents, send them off for signatures, and then get them back. And then we'll work on a few more um, kind of tidbits that Zipform can do and show you how to bring these documents into your command opportunity. Hope everyone has great weekend plans. As always, it's great talking to you, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks so much, guys.